Hi everyone. We're going to start in a few minutes. If you need or if you're interested, I'm going to just paste in the chat the link to the Google Doc that has all the information about the about the plugins so all the tools we need to get started if you i don't know if you, you might want to follow with me so uh, just uh, check the resources and install them uh, the resources that I listed for November the 2nd. So the first time we, uh, I started creating uh, the, the I, st I, I tried to create the plugin, but then the stream just failed. Today, that should be better. I revised all my uh, parameters for OBS, sort of for the streaming, that should be, that should be fine. Yeah. Two, <coughs> two minutes left before we start. I hope you can hear me. Let me ask there. I can you hear me? Super. Hi, Erwan. Super glad to see you. I, I I think I don't know you. Uh, bonjour, bonjour. So I have very high hopes for today. Um, it was very disappointing to have the stream that failed. Hey, Fabrice. It was a very disappointing two weeks ago when the stream uh, failed, um, especially that um, you know you were several of you, of you were attending the stream and and just having the the stream to fail was uh, I was super sorry to have wasted your time. Um, again, I think that that's going to be better today, and if it works. Uh, we're gonna do something amazing, which is creating a plugin live. Uh, uh, and as I uh, repeat several times, I, I uh, record this this uh, this stream so that hopefully what we have, what we're gonna do today, can become a, a, a tutorial or a document for anyone who wants to create plugins. Anyway, it's 3 p.m. Uh, we have three viewers. Woohoo! <laughs> so, uh, so we can start. Uh, so, yeah, let's do that. Um, so, I'm sharing my screen, which is very simply a web browser. Uh, in the spirit of Twitch, you know, it's not going to be a lecture about how to create plugins. It's going to be a discovery, right? I've, I've created many plugins before, but uh, uh, I'm really in exploration mode. So uh, bear with me. So as far as I remember, you go to the GitHub uh, repository for Gelfi plugins. So I just typed that that in the search bar, Gephi plugins. Oh, let me fix something I, as usual, my, 
my camera is upside down and so you can't I mean yeah that's better okay so now when I'm gonna look on the oh, yes when I'm gonna look on the right my face is facing right okay so gave you plugins on github so that's the page uh, the page is the repository for all plugins that have been created you can see them in the master sorry in this drop down menu here uh, i think my yeah the zoom work works great so in this drop down menu you can scroll and see all the the code of all the plugins that have ever been created and that have been approved you know like released by the Giphy team anyway you have this code for the plugins but you also have uh, instructions on how to uh, on how to create plugins so first and that's what we had started doing last time we're gonna uh, clone this repository uh, cloning means we're gonna duplicate uh, that you know this uh, what you see here we're gonna duplicate it to our own github account uh, uh, how do you do that? Well, um, there is a clone. Oh, oh, is it fork? Yeah, we're gonna fork it, which is cloning, I think. Or oh, not exactly. Uh, anyway, we're gonna fork it. So we're gonna just click on there here, fork. Yes. And it it offers to create, you know, to fork the uh, the repository for our own account, and that's fine. Create. So copy the master branch only. Yeah, I suppose so. Go. So I just clicked on it and it's done already so if you look at the top of the page you see that we are not on the Giphy repository anymore uh, the Giphy account sorry we are on my account and this repository is the fork from Giphy from Giphy original repo okay now once we have done that uh, we're going to clone this repository on our computer. So cloning, uh, I suppose there are more technical definitions and more accurate. In this case, it's going to be just downloading the, uh, the repository on our computer. So how do we do that? Uh, as, as you see, well, let me go back here. As you see, we're going to need that. Do you see it here? No, you don't see it. And here, oh, weird. Yeah, better. You're going to need Git for Windows installed on your local computer or Git for Mac. I have provided you links to go and install this free software i have already that installed on my computer uh, so let's do that um, i'm gonna so i'm gonna show it to you but let me just prepare that in a second um, gonna well I think I can show it to you here do you see it so that's my it's a folder on my lap on my laptop I'm gonna just create uh, a new folder 
called uh, Giphy plugin development. Okay, I open it. And there, this is where we're going to start using the program, the Git program on my computer, because this program is going to help us download. Uh, let me show it again. It's going to help me download this code on my computer. So how do you do that when you are on your computer? Uh, you just right click and you're going to open, uh, open a, a command line interface by clicking on git bash. So let me, it has opened, let me show it for you here. So it's super intimidating, right? It's like, wow, uh, like an MS-DOS uh, kind of uh, environment from your childhood, maybe. Uh, but actually, uh, uh, I'm not a Git expert. I, I, I made huge mistakes when I use Git. Uh, at least I tried not to do these mistakes. But So I know about five comments in Git. The first one you should... Uh, well, I don't even know. I suppose I can just copy paste the instruction we had. Let me. So, what should you write in this command line interface? I suppose we should just write that. So I copy again. I'm just copying the the first instruction. Uh, that is on the page, and I'm going to paste that here. As you guess, of course, I should not leave username like that. I should use my username on, uh, on GitHub because I have, this is where the repository is. So let's see what happens. Yeah. Very simply, it does it. It clones the repository on my laptop. And that's it. OK. Uh, I suppose I can just close this window. I'm going to close it, yes. Then it's, then you should open uh, a command line interface, not the one from GitHub. It might actually work, but I'm not going to try it. So back to, you know, back to where I was, it, it has created a Gephi plugins folder. Let's open it. It has, you know, created all of that. And I'm going to now apply, you know, this instructions there. This should not be, so it should be run from this folder. Again, I right click, but um, if I right click, I don't have the, the command I need. So on Windows, I shift, I click on shift and I right click and I get a new Oh, you don't see it, sorry. I suppose you see it here, yeah. I get a new item in the menu, which is open the window, a PowerShell window. PowerShell is an awful name and intimidating name just to say command line, command line interface for Windows. So I open it. For if you are on Mac, I suppose on Mac it's the terminal that you would open. Uh, and then I just copy paste that. Before I click on enter, you know, what is this MVN stuff? It's Maven and it's a tool in Java that helps you uh, compile programs. Where is this Maven coming from? Well, 
in the list of resources that I have oops, oops, oops. in the list of resources that I have uh, uh, asked you to uh, that you need to develop plugins I say that you should install NetBeans Net when you install NetBeans it also installs Maven uh, so if you did not install NetBeans then it will, you know, this line will, will make an error. It will say, I don't know what Maven is, but I have installed NetBeans, so it will work. Except that there is a very small, in, in my case, don't do that uh, for yourself, but in my case, I have installed a cousin of Maven, which, which is called Maven daemon so I just add a D but in your case you should just uh, leave it like that and I click on enter and we pray that it works and it seems to work something is being put in here and there is something happening I don't know what exactly let me zoom in Yes, something is happening. Yes, so it says, please answer the following questions so the plugin can be configured. All values can be, and I read it for you, all values can be changed afterwards by editing the configuration files. So it's just as a convenience. So I suppose configuration I'm going to just click on enter. No. Because I don't see the questions basically. Ooh. Should I try and type something? Okay, it seems completely blocked. I don't like that too much, so I should just quit, right? The bill was cancelled. Let me redo it again. And I get a mistake. Failed, no line found. Uh, so maybe I should just use ma the regular Maven, is it the issue? Let me check. But it will not find Maven, I have installed a different version. Yeah, exactly. Okay, trying again, no line found, so I'm rerunning it again with an, I add just dash x in order to see the debugging lines, but that's gonna, that's gonna be uh, unhelpful I suppose, just more lines. No line found. It's as if I had it's as if it was expecting a line from me. And it did not. Hmm. I'm thinking. Let me go back to the instructions. Hmm. 
I don't see not, I don't see anything special in the instructions that would explain the issue. So my guess would be to try again from scratch with Maven. So I have to find Maven on my computer. Hmm. Where is Maven installed on my computer? Maybe. Maybe I'll make this. Maven, do you see it here? Okay, so I have Maven installed, as you see, because it's part of the NetBeans installation, as I told you. So as uh, an attempt, I'm gonna use Maven, not Maven D, you know, the version I used to, to, to use. Uh, so let's try it. I'm just typing, you know, the, the path to the Maven program that I have found on my computer. So Maven followed by the rest of the instruction, which is that. And we hope for the best. It has not found Maven. What's the issue here? Maybe it should be single quotes. No. trying to think hard I'm gonna so as you see you are we are deep into uh, <sighs> difficult territory uh, but this is really what I, uh, hopefully I mean the good news is that I don't do that every uh, and that's really what the setup looks like you just struggle so I'm going to try and add Maven to my oops I'm going to try and add Maven to my environment variables so I want I don't know if it's super secure for me to show everything on my computer on Twitch well, it's nothing really uh, difficult, but just in case, I'm going to keep this one outside of the outside of the screen. So I'm just adding the Maven path to my environment variables. it's done I'm doing that in the hope that I can simply go back on Twitch sessions not sessions giving plugin development here in the hope that I can just right click open the window here and type maven does it recognize the thing 
Yeah. I mean, there is a failure because I just wanted to test whether he recognized Maven, but he, he did. Good, so I can now type the entirety of the instruction, which is that. We'll see. And if it fails, I think it's going to fail. I'm going to just delete the, I'm going to just reclone the whole repository. OK, enter. Yeah, oh, fantastic, it works. Uh, let me show you, because you don't see it here. Uh, let me show you here. You see? Name of organization. That is exactly the what we were supposed to have. Okay, back on track. Name of organization. So I'm going to use my own... Uh, I mean, I don't have an organization. I am an individual, but when I try to... Well, when I try to be an organization, I use the name Explore Your Data. So it's not a company, whatever, but one day if I have a company, I will call it like that, Explore Your Data. Name of artifact, so name of the, so it's the name of the plugin. Uh, we're gonna, so the plugin we're gonna create, by the way, is a plugin uh, that will show uh, the key textual information related to the nodes on a graph. Uh, you know, you are just exploring your graph on Giphy, and what the plugin is going to do is show a little panel window in the in a corner of your Giphy desktop, and it's going to show the key, the key, the like the main, the most frequent terms associated to the nodes that you selected. Super useful if you want to explore at a glance what a community is about. Um, anyway, we'll come back to that a lot, but at the moment we're going to call it. Uh, if you have suggestions, um, word word explorer. Plugin. That's really bad. You have better than that word. Oh, that's really bad. Uh, lexical explorer. That sounds more fancy. Lexical explorer. That's exactly the same, but just fancy. Version. I do. Oh, I think I have to do exactly as they say, like three numbers, 1.0.0, direct directory name, uh, so the name of the folder, uh, lexical explorer. Do I have, can I use spaces? I would love to have spaces there. No, can't have. Spaces. Too bad. Maybe I can have dash lexical explorer plugin. No, okay. Don't worry. Okay, up, up, up. Branding name. <laughs> uh, so we're gonna. That's gonna be the name. Same lexicon explorer plugin. And last category, huh? It's not a layout. It's not a filter. It's not a layout. What is it? It's kind of new and different. It's not statistics. I think it's important because it triggers some. Uh, Let me, I think it's worth checking online. So we're going to just, I'm going to zoom here and I'm going to do Giphy plugins categories because I think it, it has an influence. 
so oh, what I just did is I, I found the Gephi plugins bootcamp. So the team behind Gephi has created uh, this website that provides a lot of resources, examples, uh, templates that you can explore and reuse to learn how to create plugins. And it, honestly, you can just uh, 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 yeah do a lot of copy pasting, and I will not uh, be shy of doing so. Yes, so as you see, I was right. You can. That's exactly where you see the different categories of of plugins. I think tool is good for us. Processor. I don't know. Okay, let's do tool. That's the most uh, generic one. So back to tool. I hope it's gonna be accepted. Author. So tool is great. Author Clément Levanois. Email. I have several emails. So this one I think is still valid. Analysis at exploreyourdata.com. As you see, I have registered the domain name. URL. I put the URL of my the web app I'm developing. This is where I want people to actually go if they are curious about me. And license, super important. License is do how 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 much do you restrict the use of your code and your plugin or the reverse the reverse how how um, liberal are you with the usage of your code well i'm super liberal uh, on that at least and uh, i'm going to choose Ap apache 2.0 because that's one of the very permissive uh, licenses for code uh, you have the mit li license you have many other stuff apache is kind of the the most common one you would find so i will not overthink it and i think that, oh we have two last one description this plugin okay one a uh, one-liner this plugin displays a summary of the textual information related to a group of nodes that are visible in the overview in the overview Well, they say one sentence, but we're going to do useful for a quick understanding of the of the useful for a quick understanding of the identity maybe of this group of nodes good long description so I, I will not bore you with that it can be expanded later I'm going to just have one line to to get it started um, uh, this plugin I could just repeat what I have said before but I don't trust copy pasting in the command line. I I I, I fear I'm gonna break everything with a control C. Uh, this plugin uh, helps a user better understand the the meaning of a group of nodes by displaying. the lexical information related 
do this nodes, do this nodes in a compact way on the overview. Well, I, I got started, I'm going to continue on the overview. Oops, the lexical information. on the nodes comes from an attribute of these nodes uh, comes from a, a textual attribute of these nodes the user can select which attribute by the way, if you have comments and or if you start, and I mean, if you get what this plugin is about, let me switch to when I'm talking. Let me switch here. If you have comments or or, or if you don't see exactly what this plugin is about, uh, just you know share it on the on the comments. I see the comments online, so I can really react. If you have suggestions. Uh, you know, if you find it useful for one of your use cases, please react. Uh, feel free to, and also uh, feel free to react later, not just in the in the stream, but uh, by email, on Twitter, on the Giphy Facebook page. Don't hesitate. Okay, back to back to the command line. Nya, 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 nya. The user can select which attribute should be the source of this textual information. Uh, ideally, we're going to do that together, but I hope what I'm going to do is enable the user to choose which group of nodes would be summarized textually. The user is able to select which group of node is uh, is uh, summarized in the panel? I don't know if you see what I mean, but like if you have a graph and the graph has you have run a, a community detection algorithm, so basically you found groups in the graph. The plugin we are developing should be able to um, should be able to display the textual information related to just one group of nodes on the display, not all nodes on the graph, uh, because that's super interesting to know what is the what are the key terms related to a group as compared to uh, the key terms for another group so that you can quickly uh, eyeball you know the the identities of these different groups I'm so much relieved that we got this thing sorted out you know the the beginning when uh, it didn't work so you know we get we get to work okay fine long description would you like to add a readme file Yes, for sure. So yes. Ta-da! Finished. So what has been done actually? We can. I, I'm going to not close that. I'm going to uh, I'm going to reduce the window. I'm going to go back to my f to my uh, file explorer on Windows here. And what we see is the readme file that has been created, but more importantly, modules. Yeah, that's the thing we really need. Basically, uh, what we're going to need is many things, but the code we're going to write is going to be in modules. So we click on it. It has created the code for our, uh, not the code, the, the folder or the package for our uh, plugin, so we click on it. 
and yeah that's it that's where the code is gonna sit so what should we do i mean can we already launch it i would so much like to let's open the code what do we have let's check on main main is where the code is going to be main java okay there is nothing nothing at all that's pretty empty <laughs> That's super empty. So let's go back to the instruction. What do they say? Can you read it with me? Yes. So that we did that. Now you can add some Java code. Exactly. We can do stuff there. Yes. Yes. OK, we can do all of that. So well, before we do anything, we're going to just follow the instructions. Building a plugin means, I don't know, I'm not sure compiling is the uh, correct term, but basically uh, we're going to, it's like packaging. That's why Maven Clean Package is a good, uh, is a good, uh, it's pretty explicit. Building means packaging the, uh, the files. Uh, so let's go there. I was right that we still need this command line interface. But, 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 uh, where should I run it? Should I run this command from Gephi plugins? What do we have in Gephi plugins? Gephi plugins. Yes, no, no, definitely there. So Gephi plugins, right click, Maven clean package. So this is going to basically uh, package the code in our plugin into something we can use. We have no code at the moment, but I'm still curious about the effect. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Wow, that's a lot of work. It works, it compiles. So that's usually the moment when you go and grab a coffee. Wow, that takes so much time. I hope there is no. Oh, because it downloads Gephi. I forgot that. It downloads Gephi as a whole. As you see, that's what happens. Uh, so of course it uh, well I I'm super glad I, I I'm uh, on a broadband connection so Giphy got downloaded in a snap, but now it uh, unpacks it unzips Giphy on my laptop so uh, it can take uh, a couple of seconds for sure. So Giphy not the software but really the code of Giphy. Okay. Uh, by the way, you do that just once, right? It will not uh, download Giphy each time. I hope there is no issue here because it takes quite some time. I hope it's just uh, you know the the fact that I'm streaming and that uh, but the the stream doesn't the stream doesn't break so we should be super fine. We just have to be patient.
Yeah, as I remember that, that's normal. It's just a shame we don't have a progress bar. Come on. Go, go, go. But in any case, we got started. I'm super glad the, the following steps are going to be just pure pleasure. You know, once the difficult and boring setup has been passed, uh, the rest is just you know, you build exactly what you want. It's it's great. And the plugin is quite challenging, actually. Uh, if I may uh, anticipate a bit on the plugin, the, the main difficulty I expect is, is this one. Uh, OK, so the plugin is about showing the lexical information related to a group of nodes. <coughs> I think that for the user, they don't want to have some lagging, so experience of a lag, you know, of something super slow. So if they select a group of nodes, like, you know, they divided the graph into communities, and they, they uh, so you have community 1, 2, 3, 10, and they select community three because they want to see the they want to see the uh, the lexic the well the lexical information for it. I suppose they don't want to want to wait like five seconds or ten seconds to see the information. They want to click on community three and have the information about com community three. So good, right? The issue is uh, uh, processing text at scale, like for 1,000 nodes, you might have, if you have a couple of lines per nodes, that's a bit of, of text. Uh, anyway, I'm a bit curious whether it's easy to process all of that in less an, than a second, or if it can't go uh, quicker than five seconds. So we'll see. Uh, if it's too slow, we're going to have to think and innovate to make it quicker. Because I, I don't want to, uh, to, to create a plugin that is not used because it's just boring to, you know, too slow. OK, well, this thing is. Ah, I know where we can check progress. So as Giphy is being, hmm. Giphy is being installed. So we should, yeah, exactly. We should see where it arrives. Uh, you don't see it on screen. Let me share the full screen here. Or maybe I can show it. If I do that, you see the last, you see the, the part on the, on the right. It shows where Giphy is being installed. So we can just go there. And, you know, a new folder, a new folder has been created. Oh, it's coming, I think. No, it's not coming. Yeah, and you see that a folder has been created. And let, where is Giphy? Where, are, where is the code for Giphy? I suppose it's there. Yeah. So you see it's really coming and you have a lot of files. So it means we are not stuck in the limbos, the, the the code is really, uh, I mean, Giphy is really being installed and uh, being uh, unzipped on our computer. 
by the way, the size would be, I can't remember, really, I would say 200 megabytes, maybe, around. Yay, finished! Finished, great. So you, you should have a bit of space on your computer. I mean, don't do that if you have less, you know, if, you, if your computer is really full. Uh, keep a bit of uh, hard drive space. It's finished. So, so it's done. Great. Giphy has been installed on the, on the, on your computer. And now we can run it from, from the command line with your plugin in Giphy. That's how we're going to test our plugin. How do you test your plugin? How do you see it? You see it by launching the plugin and actually it opens Giphy with your plugin in it. That's how you can see it and you know improve on it. So let's do that. Uh, we're going to follow the instructions again. <laughs> Uh, and the instructions are super clear. Let me zoom in for you. Oops, where were they? Where was it? It's here. Can you see it well? Yeah. So we do that. So copying that and then I'm going to paste it here. And I'm clicking on, uh, oops, you don't see a lot. And I'm clicking on enter. And that will launch Giphy. I hope it will not. Uh, oh, I had some music. I had put some music from the start and I forgot to launch the music. Sorry. I hope you have some background music now. Uh, Twitch is too hard, too many. Parameters. Anyway, Giphy is being launched. Uh, you see it at the bottom of the screen. It's not, you know, it's r the Giphy we just installed in this very weird way. And should I click on it? Yeah, I suppose so. Oh, it's opening on my other screen. So can I? Uh, I, I can't. Well, I'm going to be able to show it to you when it's fully open. I'm going to just transfer it to the window you can see. But I'm telling you it's opening. Yeah, brilliant. Look at that. It's Giphy. So you see it, right? This thing is has been created just with the code we have uh, launched. Uh, you see a bubble, 63 updates have been found. So it's in French, but who cares? Don't, don't click there because it's like, uh, you know, of course it's not updated because it's uh, the code we have downloaded is, uh, is one version of Giphy from a couple of months ago, I would say. Anyway, don't try to update it. Just uh, use it as, as it is. And OK. Oh, it's in French. I'm sorry. But basically, new project here. If you're familiar with Giphy, it's super classic, new project. OK, there is a new empty project there. And where is our plugin? I don't know. How did we call it? Pl uh, lexical, whatever, yeah. Maybe here, plugins. If you see it, let me know, but I think it's. Where is installed plugins? Yeah, I'm sure we're going to find it. Yeah, it's here. It's installed. Uh, actually, it's installed, but we don't see it. So. Hey, we see everything I had written in the description. Nice. Uh, it's installed, but we can't see it. So, you know, what's the point? Uh, because we didn't create a window yet. 
So, uh, so next step is creating a, a window, I suppose. But it's confirmed the, the Lexical Explorer plugin has been created. I, it's fantastic in less than an hour. Uh, I suppose we could have been quicker, but you know, setups are just awfully long. I'm going to switch it to English just so that the next time I launch it, uh, the next time I launch Giphy, uh, it's going to be in English. Uh, okay, I close I close Giphy because so far our uh, plugin is has nothing, so we don't need to. We don't need Giphy at the moment. We need some code. Okay, we don't save any. It's uh, just you know it, we don't need that. Okay, great. Uh, so what we need. What we need is uh, is a couple of things. If the music is too loud, by the way, just let me know. I'm gonna in my earphone. It's a bit loud. So what we need now is we should prepare for next time. Next time we're gonna code this plugin, uh, but we should. You know, we're going to, uh, I suppose the first step, we'll, we're going to add a window. That's going to be amazing. Um, I feel like Daniel Schiffman when I get excited like that. I don't know if you know Daniel Schiffman, the guy from uh, the coding train. He, he has a level of energy that, <laughs> uh, which is extraordinary. Uh, but anyway. What I wanted to say is that, let me shift, let me shift there. Yeah, you see. What I want to say is that we should prepare for next time. So, I just shifted to the resource file for all my Twitch sessions. I, if, if, you f if you have not found the the link, I just put it in the chat again uh, because it's a, not a document, it's a Google Doc that everyone can open. Uh, so actually, if you join on the Google Doc, I'm going to see your little icon and it's going to be fun. Uh, I'm going to add a couple of stuff that we need for the next time. Uh, as a reminder, Reminder, can you read what I write? Yes. Reminder, I would like to remind myself that to launch the plugin, you know, what was the line we have? Yeah, we have done that. Uh, hmm. I think we can launch the plugin from NetBeans, but just in case, to I'm just want to be I just want to you know have a reminder of the two lines we need to write to compile a plugin and then to launch it. Where were there? I mean that's the second one, but where is the first one? Yeah, this one. Yeah, wow. <laughs> I could have <laughs> Maven clean package. It's not super difficult to remem remember, but I'm just, I don't know. Reminder to compile the plugin. Oops, compile. Maven clean package and to run the plugin. in uh, to run the plugin in Giphy. Uh, that was the other line of code, not code, but like the other instruction that this one, uh, this one is a bit harder to remember. 
yeah, copy paste it there. I'm going to put it in a uh, fancy color, like the color of Twitch, yeah, purple of Twitch. Up. Nice. Uh, yeah, we have three minutes left, but I don't want to, to finish on a rush, so I'm going to uh, stop there and uh, I'm going to write well, let me write a couple of last things. I'm going to write the steps for the next for next week, same time next week. What do we want to do? We want to next week we want to open the plugin in NetBeans. Uh, uh, research how to create a window, a panel, that's the proper term, in NetBeans. Uh, and then we will improvise, I guess. Right? Then it's going to be a lot of data science kind of work where we're going to look at how do we get the lexicons from the nodes and how do we crunch this data to get you know the key terms that's going to be a, a mix of improvisation and you know we're going to do that live I, I of course i could prepare it for a whole week but i i can't i don't have time for that so we're going to do it in the twitch sessions um yeah, I mean, that's good en enough, I suppose, for next week. Well, that's it for today. I, you can't imagine how glad I am that uh, it didn't break. And also, I was super worried at the beginning when I couldn't even execute, you know, the first line on the command line. It was, it didn't work. I was so panicked inside. Uh, but in the end, it turned out OK. And we made a great progress because uh, we are, the setup is, while well, it's finished, not completely. I, I, will be, I will be positive that we are finished with the setup when uh, we will have opened uh, NetBeans and that we will have made sure that we can compile and run the plugin from NetBeans because it's it's a bit more convenient because NetBeans is where we're going to code stuff. So it's convenient that we can code in NetBeans and then launch, compile and launch the plugin from NetBeans instead of opening the command line each time. I mean, we could, right? It's so easy. But as a lazy person, uh, or not just as a lazy person, actually, it's also that we can debug stuff in NetBeans. So we're going to be able to debug our plugin in Gephi uh, while in NetBeans. And, and that's, that's a super important feature to, 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 to code uh, quicker and to solve bugs quicker. OK, then it's 4 PM. Thanks a lot for your participation. I'm going to close the stream in a in a minute or two, I'm going to just hang out with my cup of coffee, coffee. just like, uh, you know, uh, I think the, the category of this stream is just chatting. So I'm going to try and, and be casually informal in the next two minutes, and then I'm going to close the stream. So thank you for viewing that, and I'm going to post it with chapters on YouTube so that uh, the viewers will be able to jump to the key parts of the setup of the plugin for Gephi. It worked! Woohoo!